Hi, welcome back to Our Town. My name is Chip Harrington, and I'll be your host once again this week, where we try to profile some different people or, or issues that we have here on a regular basis in Ludlow. And this week, we have, of, uh, I think, one of five people that I can think of that have, I think, made it big in either Hollywood or politics, and that is uh, a little while ago, we had Mr. Mario Roman on. I uh, used to be known as Mario Gonzalez. He's an actor in uh, Hollywood. Um, we also have Mr. Uh, Mike Mushak, who's a uh, guitarist in the band uh, Stained. Mr. Jim King, who works for President Clinton. He's from Ludlow, made it pretty big. And today we have Miss Gretchen Palmer, yeah. who everybody in Ludlow <laughs> will know her as the Uh Hung Girl. Uh huh. She was, uh, <laughs> those of you who don't remember or don't recognize the name, she was one of the dancers. Uh, with Ray Charles when they were doing the commercials for Pepsi about how many years ago was that? I really don't want to say but seven years. So about seven years ago. About seven years ago Gretchen made her, I'm not going to say debut, but at least in Ludlow that's when we yeah. started hearing about you again because when you were here in Ludlow we all knew you as a cheerleader in, in town and, and doing some of the other things that you did, but that's when you got your, uh, your break in the business back then totally. at least as far as we were concerned. So thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. I know me. You're, you're home for the, uh, for the 4th of July holiday, and your husband is, is here in, in the, uh, my baby. the room with us. And your baby. What's your baby's name again? Savoy. Savoy. Little baby girl. Little cutie patootie. Yeah. So you're home, <laughs> and, and you're visiting with some of your friends, Denise Wilcox. or Maganero. Maganero now. Um, and I know Denise was good enough to get you in here for us. That's my so. girl. That's my buddy. Thank you very much for doing that. Well, before we start talking about your career and how you have ascended to where you are and where you hope okay. to ascend even further in the future, but... Where were you born and raised, and how did you get to Ludlow? Born in Chickabee, Massachusetts. Um, my father was in the military, Air Force. We were over at um, Hickam in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. First, we actually lived in Springfield. Then we, um, we was shipped over to Hickam in Hawaii, and then back to Westover in Chickabee. Mm -hmm. And from there, bought a house on Holyoke Street, and lived there from sixth grade all the way up until my graduation. Mm -hmm. And you graduated from Ludlow High School. I did, and he wants me to tell my No, age. we don't have to talk about what okay. year it was. We don't okay. have to do that at all. <laughs> okay, but you people know anyway. Yeah, everybody in Ludlow knows. You're not going to hide <laughs> anything from anybody in this town, because we all know it. <sighs> but um, so you, you, during, during high school, what kind of activities did you get involved in? So funny. I didn't do any drama. I didn't do anything like that. Um, but outside of it, my mom got me involved in Frank Hatchett Dance School mm -hmm. at, 11, at the age of 11, because I, I was an introvert. And so, my aunt said, I'll just get her out there in the public and start dancing. And that changed my life. I always wanted to be on Zoom. Remember Zoom? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I want to Zoom, yeah. Zoom, 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 Zoom. Yeah. So I went to do that. And um, so I started singing and dancing. We started doing musicals and stuff like that. And I, in, in Ludlow, I was involved in cheerleading. Mm -hmm. And I started off cheerleading from sixth grade all the way up until my senior year. And then I quit. I quit cheerleading. I was, I think I was captain of um, JV mm -hmm. and uh, and I did one half of the season for varsity. Why did you quit? Because of dance. Oh, okay. It was like the mixture of the two and I was like dancing and modeling and just doing all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That was cool. And that was while you were here in this area, obviously. In Ludlow. What kind yeah. of productions were you involved with here? Was it like local things that you were just kind of... But actually it was in Springfield because Frank Hatch yeah. is in Springfield. So I would, uh, my mother would, I would either take the bus in or my mother would take me. And we did The Wiz, mm -hmm. and that was actually the first musical that we did. And um, But it was like, what I'm talking about, I was in the pro class, so we took ballet, tap, jazz. I mean, I danced. I went on Wednesdays, all day Saturdays, and Sundays, sometimes Mondays. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I, I was exposed to everything. And then we started modeling, and so it just encompassed everything in the arts. Mm -hmm. And that was the thing that, that triggered me into, um, after graduation, I got accepted at Boston Conservatory. I wanted to go to NYU, but my mother, I went to um, the audition for um, Boston Conservatory. My mom mm -hmm. and dad, they, I don't know if they'll admit this, but they wanted me closer by. Yeah. And so as soon as I got accepted there, we just took, they just took it, or we took it. And I didn't get a chance to do the NYU. So you kind of fell into the whole fame. That, remember the movie Fame? Totally. That was that's like your exactly, movie, right? That's exactly, exactly. Right. But Boston Conservatory is like all wooden, the wood floors, mm -hmm. the down in the basement. I mean, you hear, you're walking through the alley going to my classes. The dormitories are right on the other side. You hear people rehearsing piano and mm -hmm. trumpets and opera singers and you know, it's it's totally amazing. It was it was totally. So you had a fame. really good experience over there, then. Oh, yeah. 
It was the best. Then, like a lot of the Broadway shows, they go to Boston and uh, they preview there. Mm -hmm. So I saw Dreamgirls so many times. Mm -hmm. I saw all the shows, and you know, for 10 and 15 dollars before they went to Broadway. Mm -hmm. And Jasmine Guy, I actually saw her in a couple of shows there. She used to be on A Different World. Oh, yeah. And a um, couple, a lot of, lot of people came through there, came through Boston. And here comes Denise Maganero right now. <laughs> Other people know her as Denise. Well, we're not going to bring her on Denise camera. Denise Wilcox, Maganero. She's Maganella, here. Yeah. That's right. Um, so that, that's when you got to Boston, and that's yeah, is that kind of when you really started years. spreading your wings and really saying, "I'm, I'm going to. This is well, like going to be your life." You know, you know, when you make that big step into college, I really believe in school. I believe in college for all kids, and uh, because I think what that did for me. It created the discipline I needed for Hollywood, mm -hmm. for anything that I pers that you're pursuing in life. College gives you structure. It gives you four years of a boundary that you can fail, and your mom and dad or the school picks you up, you mm -hmm. know, unless you totally flunk out of the school, you know. So um, that I did, I I got a chance to spread my wings. I became really, I, I want to say obsessed with. I didn't do the party thing in Boston. Yeah. I didn't do anything. I mean, I was in the studio. I was working on my craft. And then I got involved in a company outside of um, the school. And then someone said to me, got to go to Alvin Ailey. And I became a fan of Alvin Ailey Dance Company. And, um, and, and there was a big audition for their, for their scholarship. And it was my senior year, so I was already three years there, and doing shows, choreographing, learning to be a teacher mm -hmm. of ballet, dance, and everything. Um, and so I went to this audition at uh, Alvin Ailey, 400 girls, mm -hmm. and it was in the it was like in December, right before the Christmas break. And I was like, oh, I want this, you know. And I became a bunhead, and I mean, totally looked like the you know the ultimate dancer. Yeah. And they chose seven people. And I was one of those people wow. out of 400. And I was like, oh my god. And I mean, I fell back on the floor. I was so excited. And I found out that I had to start in January. But I had one more semester of oh school. My god. So that was a big decision. And I forfeited. it. And they, they, I said, well, when I come back in the summer, can I come right back? And they wouldn't let us do so that. So you chose to go finish your? I finished school. Wow. And uh, one of the best things I did. But I mean, it must have been a, a big confidence booster because you realized yeah. that you could make it. You know, you, totally. you were seven out of four hundred people that were chosen. So, I and mean, and I'm a good faker at like things I really can't do. Like wanting to be here now. Oh yeah. You're making believe. <laughs> you're making believe you want to be here now. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing a great job That's of it. Good chip. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> but um, but like I said, that must have really given you a lot of confidence because you did. Yes, it did. You narrowed yourself down to, out of four hundred people to seven, and <laughs> and you got yourself. <laughs> there. <laughs> They're cracking up over there, man. Even my little girl's cracking up. That's a good one, Chip. Yeah, no, but I mean, what I mean by a faker, or, you know, I, I stood in the, like in the audition, the reason why I was one of the seven chosen is because I stood in the front line, and I don't even know if I remember the combination, but I mm -hmm. act like I knew it. Yeah. And so even the people that were around me that knew it, and if I was going one direction, yeah. they believed me over <laughs> them, you know, so... I mean, it was just like one of those things, but that's what I did. So um, I finished school and graduated, and immediately the next week got on a bus to New York. And this time I was really afraid because in the summer it's even more people mm -hmm. auditioning. So I think it was like 550, and this time they're only taking four. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. So, I, I mean, all I did was I just focused, and at the end they called my name. Wow. And this time I really bawled. I was crying so hard. and. Uh, packed my bags and uh, with a local girl, with a, her name is Denise Mullen. We, she was looking for an apartment, graduated at the same time, mm -hmm. and we got an apartment in Jersey City. And I started my quest in New York City. Bunhead, I call myself. Yeah, what's the, what's the whole thing about the bunhead? What's that mean? Well, you look like the ultimate dancer. Yeah. You know, back in the day, back in the 80s. Early 80s. That was about early 80s, yeah. yeah. You, you wore oversized men's jackets and, you know, your jeans and your bun head and your big old dance bag and, mm -hmm. 
walk turned out walking down the street, you know, and yeah. in Manhattan, and you felt like you were the ultimate dancer, <laughs> and that was me. So is there a lot of truth to the fact that you're, there's starving actors and starving dancers, yeah. and we, you kind of fall into that crowd? I was telling my husband the other day about I would spend seven dollars a week on my groceries. I mean, I'd clip coupons and you know. And seven dollars a week? Yeah, I didn't eat very well. A lot of canned vegetables and things like no, that. No, I, I would do tuna, popcorn, <laughs> <laughs> soup, a little chunk yeah. of cheese of it, you know. Now, what about like supporting that. yourself? Were you, were you getting your seven dollars a week? Are you working at the same I, time? I worked um, in Soho in a store, and I would model sometimes furs for men that were buying furs for their mm -hmm. their spouses or girlfriends. And then there was a regular clothing store upstairs, and I made fifty dollars a week. I worked on Saturday and Sunday, and scholarship consists of me getting up at eight o'clock, getting up actually leaving at seven o'clock to be there at eight o'clock. I would have to work the desk, mm -hmm. like signing people in. And then I would have to take four dance classes a day. And um, from there, I would go, I got into a dance company. And from there, I went to rehearsals mm -hmm. until 11 o'clock at night. So I would go, leave at 7 in the morning, and I'd be home at about 11.30. Wow. And it was, it was intense, but it was so great. Seven days a week you're doing this? Seven days, well, uh, five days a week, and then um, Saturdays and Sundays I worked. Mm -hmm. And then my dad, my dad paid my rent. <laughs> yeah, thank God for fathers, I right? I know. Definitely. Way to go, Mr. Palmer, it paid off, so I know. it definitely My dad's worked. not here anymore, but. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. He died okay. in 93, no, that's okay. Okay. Because he's here, he's that's still right. here. That's he, how you, that's he knows you, Chip. <laughs> that's right. He's connected. He's watching. He's vibing. Um, so when you're in New York and you're doing the whole starving dancer and actress and model yeah. thing going on, I mean, what? How do you convince yourself, or how do you get the inspiration every day to kind of just wake up, or just kind of like a you know the what? passion I think, you have? I think being a I think being an artist is something within you. Mm -hmm. um, I was asked the other day if I wanted my daughter to um, be in the business, and I said if she really wants to do it, because mm -hmm. if you really want to do it, you've got to do it. There's nothing else you can do. It's just in you to do it mm -hmm. and to take the sacrifice and to do all that. But anyway, from there, I went from the dancing. Um, I immediately, it was uh, only about seven months. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting itchy and buying the backstage and stuff like that. And all the dancers would do it to make a little extra money. And I really have a lucky star because I went to every audition I went to, I got. Mm -hmm. Now, see, to start off in the business and to get every single job, you start to get spoiled. So when you stop not getting them, yeah. you're going, what's wrong with me? Yeah. You start psychologically going through things. But immediately, seven months, I, I did, uh, Michael Jackson was being um, celebrated for uh, making the history, the Guinness Book, for mm -hmm. selling, I think it was Thriller and all that time. Yeah. And uh, so I was one of his dancers, and he had Brooke Shields with him. So I did that, and then wow. I got the one of the first music videos because they just started doing vid videos then. And then I started. I auditioned for a film um, with Sidney Poitier directing it, and it was called Fast Forward. And that's my real. I call that my real big break because yeah. it changed my life totally. And so I auditioned in October. And um, then there was like another call back in November, and then something else in December. And this is this is a time where I'm just like doing the dance. I'm doing I'm doing a multitude of things mm -hmm. with a, with a thousand or a million other girls at the same time. Oh, right? totally. Yeah. But I'm getting called back for this movie. I'm going, oh, this is cool. This is cool. So in Alvin Ailey, they give you a, they give you a Christmas break. So mm -hmm. I just come on home, you know, not thinking about it. And then I go, God, I wonder what happened to that movie. And I would never do this today. I called up the casting director, a woman named Joy Todd, who's really a huge casting director. Mm -hmm. I called her up from my house and I said, hi, this is Gretchen Palmer, and I'm just wondering, are you guys going to call me back? I mean, it's so, I mean, now I think about it, it's ballsy to mm -hmm. do that. And she said, oh my God, hold on, hold on, let me, let me get Joy for you. Joy goes, where have you been? And they're trying to we reach want you? you to read with Sidney Poitier. And I was like going, oh, okay, <laughs> you know. So I, um, I pack my bags and I get back into New York and I read for Sydney and he's got me reading these three different roles in this movie and I didn't know what I was doing and it was mm -hmm. just and he was like the nicest person mm -hmm. and um, I read and then they call me back again and I got to dance again the last thing and and all of a sudden I find out I'm getting I have a screen test and I'm like whoa this is cool mm -hmm. and and at that time I was doing something for Judith Jamerson Ju Judith Jamerson runs Alvin Ailey dance. Mm -hmm. Um, and she also was fa famous for a, a dance called Cry and Revelations, which is a famous Ailey thing. And, um, and so from there, 
I was doing that, and so I had to make choices. I also auditioned for an off-Broadway show that was going to Israel. At that time, I, had, I, got the, I got the show going to Israel. I screen tested for the movie, but I didn't know if I had the movie or not. <laughs> and I had the Judith Jamerson. I quit the Judith Jamerson, which everyone thought I was crazy. Yeah. I wasn't going to be an ultimate dancer. Quit the, um, or didn't take the.